This Hell's Kitchen video contains elements that are not suitable for children under the age of 14. Viewer discretion is advised. Carpe diem, my name is Ultranatic, and all right, twerp, it's payback time! And speaking of time, I'll start by taking your stupid talk and watch! Redo! I'll start by taking your stupid talk and watch! That was weird. Deja vu! Yeah, to those wondering what the video tableau is referring to, and stuff like that. And I could not be happier. So, to those not in the know, I did a collaboration not too long ago on Flim Master's channel on memorable deja vu moments in Hell's Kitchen. Meaning moments that peculiarly happened twice on the show. They didn't lead to any long running trends. They were just interesting little blips that happened to repeat themselves. And Flynn and I found so many that we decided to make this a two part collaboration. With the first part being on his channel, check that out and subscribe if you haven't already, and the other part being right here. And yes, I said two-part collaboration because I'm actually joined by Flint Masters today. Take it away, Flynn. Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Flint Masters, and thanks to Ultra for inviting me on his channel and coming up with this great idea. Check out part one of my channel after you get done watching this video. And with that, I'm excited to talk about more moments of Deja Vu in Hell's Kitchen on Ultra's channel. Service ejections from Hell's Kitchen are no joke. They always manage to shake up the episode and often make for a season highlight. Which is why it tickles me that two separate ejections from seasons 15 and 20 respectively happened to a chef named Kevin on the fish station who wasn't just kicked out of the competition but was brought to the storage room with his entire team to have it done in private. For what's worth, special mention of having two chefs named Josh also be ejected mid-service. But they were on different stations and eliminated in different rooms, so it feels less special. Whereas both the Kevin ejections were basically personalized with the same details. That is something special. Where are the scallops? Right here, chef. Hey, all of you, just touch them. Come on, just touch them. Just touch that. No. Ah, I've just done them with you. And they're all <laughs> overcooked, raw. All of you, come here. Get in there. Yes, yeah, chef. Not tonight. I'm full of nice. Not tonight. What in the is going on here? What is going on? You I'm get your apron off, get packed, and off out. First, get out. Yes, chef. Who's next? Kevin. 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 How long? Oh no. There's not even. A, there's not even a call back. Hey, all of you, stop. Come here. Jay, take over. Come here. Off. Private meeting in the back's never good. You. What's wrong with you? I just have to get my head out of my ass, chef. Every table you've touched, you screwed. Apron off, jacket off, and off out of there. You're done. Melissa isn't exactly the best name to have on Hell's Kitchen, especially when it comes to trying to make a good impression on the blue team. As in both season 3 and 8, a chef named Melissa will be switched to the men's team as a final wake-up call to step up their game, only to completely crash and burn and get eliminated that same night, with both instances resulting in the chefs getting eliminated without actually being nominated, as Melissa in season 3 was eliminated without Ramsey even asking for noms, while Melissa in season 8 would get eliminated despite the blue team's nominee being Boris. Melissa, give me your jacket. You, madam, are going in the men's team. <laughs> Melissa, this is your very last chance. Yes, chef. Melissa. Yes, chef. It's like paper scallops. I'll get new there ones, you chef. Go. Pass it back to chef Melissa. The <laughs> gremlin. Everything she touches, she screws. Monkfish. Chef. Yeah, right. Uh, Fish King, come here, you. There's the monkfish. Overcooked? That's over, chef. Oh, you don't know that's overcooked? Sorry, chef. She doesn't know that's overcooked. Oh my God, completely. Melissa was nervous, I could see it in her eyes, and uh, she fell apart. You, oh, oh! Get on the garnish. Get the f off of there. Get off! Have you made your decision? Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Cut the crap with you, yeah? Melissa. Yes, chef. Step forward. Take your jacket off and get out of Hell's Kitchen. You, madam, have had more chances than anybody. Good night. Melissa, give me your jacket. Yes, chef. What? She's going home? Woo! You're in the blue team. This is the little kick in the ass that I need to start getting my game on. Now Rob is relying on Melissa to deliver scallops so he can finish his first entree salad. That's gonna cook. 
I can tell it's Rob. Oh. Rob, we go from small scallop, small scallop. Listen, just make sure these scallops come to me perfect every yeah. single time. You're already losing hey, your color you, over there. Hey, fire right here. Give me better scallops than this. These are no good. They were terrible, so I refused to put them out. I can't, I can't put back, these up. Not one of them is right. Melissa, scallop salad, how long? I, I'm all out of scallops, chef. What? I cooked the f out of all the scallops. I f the team, chef. Take the plate. Take the f plate. Pass it round. Seven pounds of scallops. Melissa must have cooked about 10, 10 pounds of scallops all cooked off for the garbage. Vinny, who you nominated? Uh, the blue team nominated for us. Melissa, step forward. Melissa, it's time to go. Thank you very much for Thank you very much. In every season, the signature dishes have their fair share of highs and lows. Like limbo pole touching the ground kind of lows. But there's an infamous incident regarding those that happened twice specifically. JP in season 13 and Kenneth in season 19 each had a dish that they finished cooking in half the time and both were horribly received with them earning only one out of five points for their efforts. And then they both got eliminated first out of the entire competition. Honestly, I I can't call that a coincidence. Though when Gordon Ramsay judged Kenneth's dish, he claimed to have not seen that happen in over a decade. Uh, season 19 came out in 2021. Season 13 came out in 2014. That's less than a decade, Gordon Ramsay. You might want to recheck the tapes there. Whose is this? Uh, JP. JP! You've got just under 15 minutes to go. Okay, I'll, I'll keep it hot. You'll keep it hot? That means you'll overcook it. I can redo it again real quick. JP, when you were cooking your signature dish, you finished with literally 20 minutes to go. Did you cook another one? Yes, I did. It better be amazing. It is a Boston baked haddock with fingerling potatoes. The fish is dry. <laughs> potatoes are solid. And that looks like something out in the 1970s. You're the only one tonight that actually cooked their dish twice. So I'm struggling whether to let you come to Hell's Kitchen or just send you home. Uh, out of five, JP, uh, you get a, uh, a one. <laughs> So, that was a disgrace. JP, here. Yeah. Give me your jacket. Sorry, Chef. Thank you for the opportunity. Good night. Thank you. Looking good. 20 minutes to go, OK? 20 minutes, Herc. It's not a race, OK? <sighs> 20 minutes left, and I'm done? I'm just, like, so lost. Like, what do I do next? Kenneth, he wrapped his dish up, like, in 20 minutes. Either this guy is the Michael Jordan of challenges already, or this is going to be really bad. Kenneth. The current job is what? Currently, I'm a personal chef and also a food service director at Philadelphia Montessori Charter School. Kenneth, you did something tonight that I haven't seen in over a decade. You had 20 minutes to go, and you started plating this dish. Describe the dish, please. Pan-seared chicken, eggplant, and andouille sausage, and orza. Right now, looking at this chicken, I'm feeling bad for those kids in Philly. Are they still talking to you? Yes, yeah, chef. Um, for me, that's a one. Kenneth. But it's time to leave House Kitchen. Give me a jacket. Thank you. It's heavy. In season 21, Ileana would get the break of a lifetime, as despite producing the worst dish in the opening night elimination challenge, her plea to Ramsey gave her one more chance. Unfortunately for her, elimination challenges just simply don't seem to be her thing, as at the next Cook for Your Life challenge, she would come in last place again, and this time didn't get a second chance. Still though, the odds for her to get last both times had to be pretty low, considering it was a 1 in 18 chance for the first, and a 1 in 11 chance for the second. Ileana, let's go. Alejandro, your comments were? Her dish uh, was a little under. Again, it lacked flavor, just poorly executed. How did you cook them? I fried them and then finished them in the oven, but it didn't uh, work in my favor exactly. No, it definitely did not work in your favor. If you can't get a wing right, what chance have you got getting to Atlantic City? Give me a jacket. Chef, I feel that I should stay in Hell's Kitchen. I do have leadership skills. I know that I can do better than that and show you more. Ileana, listen very carefully. You've got one more chance. Back in line. Ileana, please. My heart's pounding through my chest right now, but I look down at my dish and I'm happy with it. I've got an aubergine puree, crispy fried Brussels sprouts with a lemon sherry vinaigrette. The eggplant puree is way too thin. Okay. So you've created this sort of slurry. Dish up. At the bottom here. Why is that so sweet? What have we put in there? Honey. Honey. Dish up. So use that sparingly. My decision is flat. 
head back to the dorm. Thank you, Chef. Congratulations. That was a really good effort. The chicken was cooked beautifully. It's just so sweet. It destroys what you've done with the chicken. You're just not ready to become my head chef. Keep going. Yes, Chef. Please? Yes, Chef, I will. May I have that jacket? Thank you. Yeah, this is gonna be a quick one, but I can't help it. I just find it funny. Remember Joe from season 15? Underrated funny chef gave me low-key George Costanza energy. Well, in two separate episodes, there was something that just got on his nerves. During the episode two punishment and the episode five reward challenge, Joe really couldn't put up with corn. No, seriously. There are two isolated instances where corn gets shown and he seems almost offended having to deal with the product. That is so freaking unimportant, but it also cracks me up. I could not mention it. Go, go out front. Yes, chef. Oh. Ah. That's a whole lot of corn. There were so many ears of corn on the bed of that truck, just all loose. They went from Nebraska right into the back of this pickup truck. Mother shuckers. Unbelievable. Ladies. We have grilled corn with a little bit of a garlic uh, jalapeno aioli. That's nice. That's a nice kick. Mm -hmm. It's pretty. It is pretty. <laughs> kidding me? Were they the point? Yes. It's just corn, but you're lucky because it's delicious corn. You grilled some <laughs> corn. As Ramsey always says, teamwork is super important, and we saw teamwork pay off a couple times in complete deja vu, as in season 17 and 18. Barbie and Kanae were both allergic to nuts, but not only did they both get help from their teammates, but both their dishes would receive positive reviews. In the next round, P. the red team is perplexed. So the blue team punishes them with peanut butter, chef. Peanut butter. Guys, is everyone feeling okay? I'm not feeling okay. I'm allergic to peanut butter. I'm gonna need help because there's just no way I can try my sauce with the peanut butter. Uh, can one of your teammates help you out with that element of your dish? I'll figure, I'll find it. My sauce is done. Can you taste my sauce? Sure. That's good. It's That's delicious. Good. Describe your dish, please. Hand seared halibut with an African peanut sauce, chef. I'm allergic to peanuts, so. So you haven't tasted this? No, chef, but my team helped me. Um, you've nailed the fish. Peanut butter and corn paste, delicious. That is a four out of five. Good job. <laughs> Thank you, chef. You need the prawn head sauce for the noodle? Yes, prawn head and um, cashew. But you need so me to I'm taste it because you're allergic. Yeah. I'm allergic to nuts as far as like eating them. So, Ariel, you are my taste tester. It needs more salt to the sweetness. I have a cold cashew sauce with the prawns that are poached. Also Chinese, very aromatic. Flavor is really good. Does the point go to the blue team or the red team? The blue team. Blue yes. team. Yes. Yes! Your brain, my mouth. Yes. <laughs> As much as I love Hell's Kitchen, I don't know everything about it. And I love it when things I never noticed before are brought up to me by other fans. Like how my injury crybabies video, I saw a comment or two saying that if they had nickel for every time in season nine, badly made Wellingtons were blamed on Tommy's prep work. Insert Doofenshmirtz punchline here. Because yeah, at the final 11 and final seven of that season, we see Jonathan and then Elise, surprise, surprise, point the finger at Tommy for rejected Wellingtons when it's plainly obvious they are the ones at fault. Again, rest in peace, Jonathan, but Tommy did not deserve that. Though kudos to the guy for handling those situations very maturely. Oh, f no. Come here, all of you. The pastry, touch it with your fingers. It's raw. Jeff, Tommy wrapped the Wellingtons. What do you think? I think it's up, man. Yeah. What do you think then, Mr. Rock and Roll? It's not good. Are they all like that? I'll tell you right now, Chef. Yeah, it's 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 too, man. Flour both sides of the pastry. I did. I was doing them with you, brother. We were doing them together, just... side by side today. So don't throw me under the bus. If it's raw, that's you not knowing how to cook. Walk like a man, talk like a man, take it like a man, bro. Straight up. Thanks, Tommy. Elise, Wellington. Yes, Chef. Oh come on. What is that? Elise, who chewed that? That's what you presented me. Bring me that tray here. All of you, come here. When you score pastry that deep with a sharp knife. Jeff, I did not score the first tray. So who scored them then? Tommy did. Now you're blaming Tommy. I want to see what you say to him. Come here, you. Did you or did you not score the first tray of Wellington? No. 
crazy. Don't come over bitching at me. I did not score oh, them, and I'm not lying. Play the replay. I'm unwrapping your wild things for you. No problem. But uh, I'm not scoring them, though. Cool. Yo, that's some booty ass man. That girl coming over trying to blame us because she can't cut Wellington. Who are you going to play? Carrie, Cooper, Jamie. Millie is quite the interesting personality, to say the very least, to the point where he's so interesting that he decided to have an almost eerily similar run in All Stars that he did in season 14. In both seasons, he was an above average chef who made it to fourth place, going home because he couldn't get the job done at the pass. Also, funnily enough, he once again brought back his iconic you can't burn phrase that made him such an icon in the first place. As despite him being a teddy bear, the big man wasn't afraid to tell someone off who he felt deserved it. Brendan, I've been seeing cats like you all my life. Make more money than me, know more than me, and can't get on the line of burn. You come in, Please. you show all these little Please. specials and then I'm standing there putting all that out all Day. And then every time I say something to you, you second guess me, and you can't even burn. Millie, please, you please tripping? Don't. What the man? You can't burn. Millie, Millie, you're running the hot plates. Yes, sir. Okay, Health Kitchen is now yours. Let's okay. go. Walking in, table 41. Appetizers is going to be two risottos, two tunas. Second course is going to be two halibut, one Wellington. We need to see good first. Yes, sir. You need to know inside out. Never trust them. Yes, Only trust yourself. I'm definitely trying to pay attention to every ticket that come in now because I ain't want to make no missed calls and have my team cooking something they wasn't supposed to. Millie. Step forward, young man. You have great heart, great passion, and a great future in this industry. You should be proud of everything you've accomplished here. Ah, great job. Thank you, sir. Well done, buddy. Yo, I love y'all, man. Bye, Millie. Stay Bye, strong. Millie. Cook that food. Old rivalries are renewed. Get the out of here. Can you sit down? You want to hear it again? Do it tell me day. more, Millie. You can't burn. Right, Millie. Yes, sir. Over, please. I want to see an upgrade from season 14. Remember last time you stood here? Yes, sir. You know how difficult it is. Two halibut, one Wellington. It's only three entrees. Read the ticket first. Yes. Millie's first test is already in his hand. An improperly written ticket from Marino. Two salmon, one lobster Wellington, and one beef Wellington. And there's a special request. No pork on this, on this ticket, OK? It's no pork. Hey, we can't do the Wellington with no pork. We need another order because we can't do the beef Wellington with yeah. no pork. Hey, okay. wake up. Yeah, wake up. It's like a pizza with no dough, you idiot. The first chef who will not be heading into the finale, Millie. I already know. Love you, Millie. Over here. Keep hold of that jacket. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Yo, I love y'all. Kill it, man. I love you, Millie. When Flynn and I made our first collaboration about chefs failing at their specialties, we mostly pointed out regional specialties, but that doesn't necessarily count for all of them. Take Van Herr from season 6 and 17, for instance. He's a poissonnier, or a fish cook in layman's terms, and despite being incredibly talented in both of his seasons, he was not able to win either of them. We all know the second time was complete BS, but has anyone else noticed that in both of those seasons he was eliminated on the fish station? Seriously, the one thing you'd expect him to be well versed in, or at least able to pick up quickly, and it ended up being his doom twice. That's like black flying your Chardonnay levels of ironic. I legit feel bad for Van. I'm most concerned about making sure all my fish is properly cooked tonight. <laughs> So you started to seal that sea bass. Come here, quickly, leave it there. But we haven't even sent the appetizers. Here we go again. I, I'm watching you like a whore. I'm a f***ing eagle over you. I understand. What's on ye? I'm going up, all right? Yeah. F***ing raw. Just stop. There you go. Yeah, it's been a long night. Hey, you mean? Sure. In the back. I can't send any more raw halibut. It's killing me. I'm working hard, chef. Next time, you're out. I understand, Chef. Man, give me your jacket, big boy. Yes, sir. Listen. Yes, Chef. You can cook. I appreciate yes. it. I, I still got a few more years. I can I can be like you one day. Hey, keep it cool and let your food do the talking. One order table three, one soul, two lamb, two New York strip. Yes, yes chef, chef. chef. I'm five minutes out. Come on, Van, talk. Talk, five talk, minutes, talk. Chef. Let's go. Come on, Van. Open up that mouth. Oh. Van, do you need any help? Heard, Van? We're good. Perry, where's the salmon? Van, please connect with me. I'm getting a little bit off now. It's a little bit too laid back over there. Van, you must have had a longer night in Vegas than I did because you're moving super slow right now. Turn the up, bro. It's over. I trusted you, Van. Where's the bounce back? Van, shut down. Van, come here. Young man, keep your head up. 
focus and continue on that journey. Thanks, Van may be a poissonnier, but his performance on fish was anything but fantastic. We've already discussed some bad first names in Hell's Kitchen, but apparently having a good first, and for that matter, last name, can really affect your performance in a positive way. In season 4 and 10, we saw Christina win the season, followed by two Ariels winning in season 15 and 18 respectively. We then almost saw two more same name winners happen, as we almost saw another Heather W win in season 16, while we almost saw not just another Megan win Hell's Kitchen, but another Megan freaking Gill. Seriously, we've come very close to having almost half the winners sharing the same first names, and they're all female first names as well. Just freaking wild. On the count of three, open the door to your dreams. One, two, three. Holy I am like so happy on 10 different levels. I can't even explain it. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of Hell's Kitchen, Christina. On the count of three, turn your handle. One, two, three. Oh! Yeah! Oh my God, it feels so good. It's totally amazing. I can barely feel my body right now. Let's hear it for Hell's Kitchen winner, Christina! On the count of three, you'll turn your handles. One, two, three. Yes. This opportunity is just gonna open the doors for me to have a happy life. Mom, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Let's hear it for Hell's Kitchen winner, Ariel! On the count of three, I want you to turn your handles. One, two, three. I have been to Hell's Kitchen twice and made it out alive. And not only alive, but I made it out a winner. Ladies and gentlemen, our Hell's Kitchen winner, Ariel. That was 10 more moments of deja vu in Hell's Kitchen. A special thank you to Scruffy the Cat and Big 2000 for reminding me of the Tommy deja vu moment. That was an awesome find. And to everyone else in the audience, if you can think of other great Hell's Kitchen deja vu moments, please list them in the comments below. Or check out the first part of this crossover on Flynn's channel where 10 other such moments are mentioned. And another major gracias to Flynn Masters for joining me in this video and being an amazing collaborator for this project. Thank you once again Ultra for coming up with this idea and having me on his channel. If you love Hell's Kitchen videos like this, then please be sure to check out my channel as I post weekly fun HK content and the support would mean so much. Yep, was great having you on here, Flynn. And all right, twerp, it's payback time. Wait, I already said that. And something else I said before was that my next Hell's Kitchen video, which I was so excited for, was supposed to be about something else, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm excited for every Hell's Kitchen video, but I did promise y'all a certain other topic for down the road. Wait, shut up. You shut up. Go home. If you don't like it, go you home. You shut up. I'm not talking to no, no, Michelle. No, 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 no. You're no. talking to Michelle. No. You're rude. No. Elise really needs to grow up. She's in her 30s and she's acting like a middle schooler. And don't y'all worry, I intend to deliver. Everything.